Hello and welcome to Bastion and Broadcasting, where today we are picking up from where we left off a couple of weeks ago. We did a playtest of a little war game I've been working on called uh, One Times One, uh, Horse and Musket. Uh, today I'm going into another one of my systems, so I thought I quite enjoyed doing it, so I thought we could do another little kind of demo run through of one of the other games I've been working on, and this one is called Mac Attack. So this is my can't say the word mech because I'll get in trouble. These are Macs, which are Mobile Armored Colossus. Um, they might look like things that you might call mechs, but but don't call them mechs because I'll I'll have I'll have mechs knocking on my door with a uh, cease and desist notices. So these are the uh, Macs, which are big armored robots, essentially armored walking tanks. Um, and in this game, I wanted to make a really simple kind of game that had a lot of the a lot of the kind of nitty gritty detail of something like BattleTech, but um, but was much more much more simple and much more straightforward to run and kind of quicker. Like you get to that kind of destruction much more quickly than you do in a game of something like BattleTech. Um, and I I have seen Alpha Strike. Alpha Strike was sort of scratching some of that itch for me, but I wanted to. I wanted to do something different, so I, I did decide to just make my own, because of course I did. So, we're going to have a quick battle today between uh, the Reds and the Blues. Uh, and I will kind of take you through the mechanics as we go. We'll just kind of start straight into a turn, and um, I'll explain what happens as we go. Uh, the main thing you need to know is that the blue uh, force here, I've got two max, so the Arrowhead, he's a class 3, which is the biggest class. And you can move six inches. Uh, the little A next to there in brackets, uh, that means when we draw the ace, we're going to activate him. Uh, the Grenadier, legally distinct from the Commando and the Archer, of course. Um, the Grenadier is uh, a class one Mac. He can move seven, and when we draw the King, he will activate. We also have some auxiliary units. Now, I think having big kind of walking machines like this you only really get the most out of it if you've got some little people for scale. So I love using like infantry and tanks alongside these guys, but they are very much the supporting cast and they are pretty fragile and they might not, they will do some work, but they, they are the supporting stars of the show here. Um, so we've got four little squads of foot infantry and we've got three heavy tanks up here. So that's the blue forces uh, over on the red side. We have this beautiful creature, the Pink Panther, which is another Class 3 Mac, and the Weasel, which is another Class 3 Mac. Uh, so when you're building your Macs, you choose six modules to put on there, which is where you can see the things listed 1 to 6. And these can be weapons, heat sinks, armor, um, weird things that like that like fine-tune how your Mac actually works. But you'll always be choosing six, uh, no matter what the size of the Mac. Uh, and the Reds will have, they've got a couple of uh, field guns up here, some howitzers. And they've got a couple of missile trucks. And the mission we're going to be playing is Blue are going to be trying to destroy these three bunkers, which we should probably lock down so they don't go flying around. So these three bunkers are the objectives. <laughs> so let's uh, let's just go straight into it. The way the initiative works in this game is you have a deck of cards and in this deck you will have, if I can do it, you'll have a card for each Mac and each formation. So each of these Macs gets a card, the unit of tanks gets one card and the unit of infantry gets one card and the blue guys are using clubs. So when we draw the ace of clubs, the arrowhead will activate. When we draw the jack of clubs, this whole infantry formation will activate. And they don't need to stay together. They can go off in different directions, but they just activate at the same time. And we will do that until everyone has moved. Then we will shuffle the deck, and then we will have the attack phase and repeat that until everyone has attacked. So let's, uh, let's get straight to it. So the king of diamonds, so it's red. And the king, I believe, is the weasel over here. So, 
in the movement phase, you've got a few options. Um, I, sh I should have said at the start, this game is freely available at the moment. It's just it's just something I've been working on. It's nowhere near finished. Uh, if you go to bastionand.com and look in the sidebar for Mac Attack, you'll find a link to the, the document as it stands. It is a living document, so by the time you actually get to this, I probably changed something from this version. Uh, but this is how it is at the minute. So when you're moving, you choose a type of move to perform. So you can stay still, you can advance, which lets you move your distance, your move distance. You can rush, which lets you move twice as far, but you can only do that through open terrain. Or if you've got jets, you can jump. Now the weasel does have some jets, but to keep things simple, I'm just gonna advance for this turn. Although I did, you know what, I did put him here. You know what, let's, let's, let's jump. We don't need we don't need to keep things simple, do we? We can do what we want to do. So, as well as how far you move, there are two considerations to um, to the way that you move. You will see that next to each of these methods of movement, there is a TD, which is your target die. Now, after each unit moves, they'll put a little die next to them, and that's called the target die. And it will normally say a number between one and three. Um, and the higher that number is, the more difficult it is for you to hit other targets when you shoot but it also makes you more difficult to hit in return so a high number could be good it could be bad depends on the situation so if we wanted the other consideration is heat so if you want to hold you're not going to use any heat but if you advance you are going to use heat if you rush you're going to use heat equal to your class and if you jump you're going to use units of heat equal to your class multiplied by the number of jets that you use. So if you jumped with two jets and you're a class three Mac, you're gonna use six heat. Now that would be really bad because heat is, <laughs> heat is marked by a heat die. So we've got target dice and heat dice. So after a unit has moved, it's gonna have one die next to it to show its target die, which is how hard it's gonna to be to hit and how fast it's moving. One die next to it to show its heat. And that's it. It sounds like a lot, but once you start doing it, they're just the two things that you need to worry about, really, with your, your Mac. So, let's do it. He's going to jump. If we want to jump, we can move a distance equal to their move, multiplied by the number of jets used. Ignore anything in your path. So, he's got two jets. If we did a jump, it's kind of stupid. Let's let's not do a jump for now. This is a bit of a last resort because we'll, we'll we'll end up on six heat if we do a jump. And if you would ever go above six heat, you start taking damage instead. Six is the highest number of heat you can get to safely. So he's actually just going to advance. So you can move in any direction and you can set your facing at the end of the move. So he can move six. We'll just send him like down here and we'll set his facing there. No. Nope there so you have kind of a you have like a 180 degree arc in front of you for your front so he can now see all of this stuff out here so he because he advanced his target die is going to be one and because he and also because he advanced his heat die is going to be one as well so that's it he's done so let's draw the next card. The Queen of Diamonds. So this is the the Missile Trucks. So I, I neglected to put their movement score on here. But all vehicles as standard are moved for. And again, they can choose to... Vehicles can choose to advance or rush if they're going across open ground. But they have to go in a straight line and then set their direction at the end. So these missile trucks, they've got like a long range missiles. So I think we want to get like a nice little firing line down here. So they're gonna, how far can they go? You know, for now they are gonna actually rush. So they're gonna rush up to eight inches. And they're just gonna both hunker in here. We're not using the hex I should say. This is just the map that we're using. Um, so they've rushed down here. Now, for auxiliary units, because I wanted them to be dead simple, 
um, and like nowhere near as detailed as the max. You don't actually keep track of heat on them and you don't keep track of their target die. Their target die is always considered to be two, just for the sake of simplicity, really. So it's that they're kind of harder to hit. It represents them being hard to hit, but also they're resilient. So that they can be a little bit, they can be really sort of simplified down because they're not the focus of the game. Um, so we don't need to keep track of heat. We don't need to keep track of target die. These guys are done. So the only reason that it matters that they rushed is that they can go across open ground. So those guys are done. Jack of clubs, so finally the blues will get to go, and the jacks are the infantry. It's good, we've done we've done a Mac, we've done a vehicle, and now we're doing an infantry squad. That's basically the three types of unit in the game, and I didn't rig this deck so that they would come out in that order, <laughs> but um, but yeah, that, that's, that's quite fortunate. So, uh, when you've got infantry, they're treated the same as vehicles. Um, the other thing I should have said about auxiliary units is you don't have to worry about which way they're facing they can they can see all around them um so just like vehicles they don't track heat they don't track target dice instead um they just move six inches but infantry can't rush as standard they can rush if you give them like a transport or bikes or something but as standard they can't rush so they're basically they're moving six inches whether they're in open ground or rough terrain so if you're going through rough terrain infantry are generally a bit better than vehicles is the the sort of the idea of that so we'll move them into this roof up here and they don't need to stay together but i am going to keep them together just so that if they can get some shots off they can actually kind of gang up a little bit on someone so i've put them in this in this terrain here um the rules for terrain are pretty simple sorry i know this keeps uh jumping around there we go so for terrain, you've got a few different types of terrain that you need to be aware of. If I can find it, that would be great. Here we go, page one. Uh, so open ground is everything that's not got terrain. Uh, anything that's rough is something that can't be rushed through. So we're saying on this map, we'll say all these woods are rough terrain. And we'll say that these big cliff faces, we're imagining they're perhaps more like a slope uh, here rather than the very stark cliff that they look like. Uh, we'll say those slopes are like rough terrain so you can't rush up or down those slopes cover is going to be all of these trees and cover will give you a bit of protection but uh the rule with cover is that you can shoot in or out of it but you can't shoot through it so if we had a unit here they could shoot at the infantry the infantry could shoot at them and the infantry would get the benefits of cover if we had one unit here and one unit here they cannot see each other because the woods are that they're, they will be going through to the other side of the woods. So that's it. And in general, it makes it makes sense if you keep the woods relatively small for this purpose. Um, like personally, I use like little clump, clumps of woods rather than having one giant wood. Uh, and yeah, it, it seems to work all right. So our infantry have moved. That's them done. The Jack of Diamonds is going to be the field gun platoon now these guys are um artillery we'll get we'll get to weapons during the, the combat phase but really these guys are kind of where they want to be so in terms of movement they're not going to do any moving at all queen of clubs is the tanks so like we said the tanks can rush up to eight inches And they've, they've got long range weapons, so they don't want to be. If they want to sort of make the best of their range weapons, they kind of want to be staying at long range. But this this ridge here is a bit of a problem. In fact, we did say let's 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 undo and undo. We did say these were. Hmm. No, I, I was I was thinking about whether I wanted to get them up on this hill, but I think that's going to be a bit of a silly thing to do so for now we'll just get them kind of up here and again you don't need to keep them together but i can't help myself there we go and again no need for target dice or heat dice ace of diamonds is our pink panther absolutely distinct from any other type of cat uh so the pink panther 
he's going to rush because we want to get up in the action. So he's, he can rush up to 12, can't he? So we're going to get in this firing line as well. This firing lane down here, I should say. So he's rushed, which means his target die is going to be 2. And when you rush, you take heat equal to your class. So this is where it pays to be smaller sometimes. Because if you're a class 1 Mac, like the Grenadier is over there, the smallest type of Mac in the game, you can basically rush for the same amount of heat as when you walk. Uh, but if you're a big Mac, um, like the Class 3s, it can be really quite expensive in terms of heat for you to rush around. So he's going to be on 3 heat. Now we have the Ace of Clubs, which is going to be the Arrowhead. Um, so what's the Arrowhead got? It's, he's got some long-range weapons. He might, he might sort of come and back up the infantry in here. So he can move six. Oh, that's kind of unfortunate, isn't it? He can just get into the cover. Um, but yeah, he's he's advanced. So that's going to be one on the target die. And a one on the heat die. And the last one must be, yeah, it's our grenadier over here. So the grenadier, he's going he's gonna to rush forward as best he can. He really wants to get in at close range, so he's going to rush. And remember, because he's class one, that rush is only going to cost him one heat, and it's give him give him two uh, target die. So that's the end of the move phase. You can see at the top right there, we've got four phases: move phase, attack phase, meltdown, cooldown. So that's the attack. The, that's the move phase all done, I should say. Uh, so let's we put our deck back together. We shuffle it. No, we shuffle it. And then we're going to go for the combat phase. Jack of clubs. So that is our foot infantry. Now, weapons have recently changed in this game. I, I wanted to make something that... I wanted to be able to have lots of different types of weapon. Because it feels good in a mech game to like choose really specific types of weapon for your, for your mech. But then I didn't want to have lots and lots of characteristics. So I've kind of broken it down into a three digit code. So you'll see these foot infantry. They've got what's listed as SK1 flak guns. And the first letter is always the range of the weapon. The second letter is the type of weapon. And the number is the caliber, which is how many dice you roll to attack with, but also how much heat it uses to fire that weapon. So the bigger the number, the better the weapon, but the more costly it is in heat. So range is going to be short, long, or artillery. This is a short range weapon. That means we can fire it up to nine inches, and that's it. Uh, K means it's a kinetic weapon. Now there are four types of weapon, and hopefully we'll, we'll cross them as we get to them. You've got kinetic, beam, uh, explosive, and thermal. So they just mean that each type of weapon has a little special thing that it can do. Um, and we'll, we'll cross those that bridge when we actually get to attacking because these foot infantry, they can shoot 9 inches. I don't think we've got anyone within 9 inches. The, we, we can nearly shoot these bunkers. So I think next turn maybe we can get up and start firing on the bunkers with these infantry. But for now, they're not going to be able to shoot. So they will stay where they are. King of Clubs is the, the Grenadier. Again, he's got, so you'll see auxiliary units tend to have like one weapon and maybe a piece of equipment as well. Max have, they can have up to six weapons because any of those module slots, you can put a weapon in there if you want to. Um, but they have the same system, it's the same codes. So you can see the only weapon that he's got is the SX3, um, <laughs> the most um, suggestively named of the codes, SX3. Um, Giga cluster, so he's got like these cluster bombs. They're S, so it's nine inches. So again, this turn he's not going to have any luck with that. Um, but we need to get him in a bit closer. Ace of clubs. We're getting all of the all of the blues, which is you might think it's good, but it means they're going to be well for firing. It doesn't matter as much, but for moving, it really matters which order you you pull them in. So the arrowhead 
he has an SB1 Pulsar, which is a short range weapon, but he has two long range weapons, the LX2 missiles. So again, L, long range, X, explosive, two, means it's caliber of two. So rolling two dice, costing you two heat. He has two of those LX2 missiles, which are long range. And for the sake of making the game happen, I think we can say that he can see over this this hill here. Uh, we'll, say, we'll say it's giving cover to whoever is shooting because it is a little bit obtrusive. But I think we'll say that he can fire here. So he could, uh, long range is a little bit more restrictive. Whereas short range, you can go anywhere up to nine inches. Long range, you have to be at least one inch away, but that's it. So beyond that, you can fire at any range. So this weasel is further than nine inches away. Oh, sorry, further than one inch away, so they can fire. The downside of this is long long range weapons are, by their nature, less um, less accurate, which we'll see in a minute. So I could shoot at the weasel with this long range. I could just immediately start firing on the objective, but that's boring, isn't it? So we are going to fire on the weasel. We could fire at them. Well, now see, I think technically we couldn't fire at the pink panther because there's a bit of woodland between them. But here, the only the only cover that's between the weasel and the arrowhead is the forest that the arrowhead is in if we're kind of generous about this hill so he's going to do it he's going to shoot at the weasel uh, and he's going to f you have to declare what you're firing first is that still in there no i think i removed that rules no I, i'm sure i did let, let, let me see let me see um this is the problem when you're constantly changing the game um there are some rules that you put in and then you go back and you decide to, oh, I'll, I'll remove that. So no, as it stands, that there was a rule in here where you had to say everything that you're firing with before you fired, which is kind of a battle tech holdover. But then I don't know if it's entirely necessary. And sometimes it, when you're trying to make a simple game, sometimes things like that are actually not what you want to have in there. So we can fire in any order that we want. Now we have one heat already. So if we fired everything we've got, if we fired the two sets of missiles and the pulsar, that would be five heat total coming from that. So he could fire all of those weapons and not overheat. Um, the pulsar, he can't fire because there's nothing in range. So you know what, we are gonna fire both of the missiles and we're probably gonna fire them both at the weasel, but we'll do them one at a time. So the caliber of each of these missiles, like we said, is two. So we'll have two attack dice. And the target number for the attack is my target die plus their target die, which in this case, because we've both uh, we've both just advanced, it's two. So at the moment, we only need two or more. There are a couple more modifiers. There's just three in here. Uh, if the target is in cover, that will go up by one. If I'm firing a long range long ranged weapon, it goes up by one. And if I've already fired this turn, it goes up by one. So for this attack. We are saying they're in cover because we're giving them the benefit of the hill and we are firing a long range weapon. So it's gone from two to three to four. So we need four plus to hit. And then if we do attack again, because we will have already fired this turn, our next attack will require a five plus. So it's always good to lead with your big guns on this game. Well, always generally good to lead with your big guns. So four plus to hit. So one of the dice is hit. So that means we have caused one hit to the weasel. And for each hit we get, we're gonna roll a d6. And that number gives us the module that we hit on the weasel. So we have hit module number three, which is his SX2 rockets. So they are now damaged. So we will put a little exclamation mark there to show that they are damaged. If they get hit again, they are destroyed and when a module is destroyed, if that module gets hit again, it starts damaging the internal structure and that's what's gonna actually destroy the Mac. Uh, if you take one internal damage and you're a class one Mac, then that's gonna be it for you. Uh, class two Macs require two points of internal damage to destroy, class three require three points of internal damage to destroy. So it's good to get modules destroyed because it does weaken the Mac, but also it opens up their innards to, uh, to internal damage. Now, we said about each weapon having a special type of, uh, a special rule for its type. Uh, explosive weapons, 
when you hit a damaged or destroyed module, you get an extra hit. So that didn't happen this time, but explosives are really good if the Mac has already taken some damage. Um, beam weapons are kind of the opposite, where if you hit an undamaged module, you'll get an extra hit. So it's good to lead with the beam weapons if you can. Uh, kinetic weapons, if you roll a six to hit, it's an extra hit, very simple. And thermal weapons cause heat to the target as well as damage. And that, and there is there are some little notes here as well. So explosive weapons are better against buildings, beam weapons are better against vehicles, and thermal weapons are better against infantry. So the arrowhead has fired once. Uh, so yeah, we, we could, you know what we'll do? We'll make the second attack against this bunker just so we can show something because we said that explosive weapons, they get plus one AV against buildings. So he'll be rolling three rather than two. Now what I should have done actually is when you fire a weapon, you take the heat immediately before the attack. So we should have taken two heat for firing the first set of missiles. And we'll take another two heat for firing the second set of missiles. Now the target die of a, of a stationary building is always one. Um, we are firing a long range weapon. We have already fired. Um, are we saying that this is in cover? I don't think that's in cover. So that means we have one, two from the two target die, three for firing at long range, and four because we've already fired. So four plus to hit. Two hits. Now these bunkers that we're trying to destroy are class three buildings, which means they need three hits to be destroyed. So let's um, let's make some little red dice for these to show how damaged they are, or rather how many hit points they have left. So it's it's very ugly, but it does the job, doesn't it? So these have both got all three of their structure points left. This one we've just blasted a bit of a hole in it. Um, so that's our two attacks that we can make. We can't use the pulser. That's it. His attack phase is done. He's on five heat and his target die is still on one. So a red ace is the pink panther, I believe. Now he has, he doesn't have line of sight to these infantry, does he? Because we said, I don't know, you can make a case for having line of sight on one of them. These two, I'm go it's these woods that are the problem. So I think we're gonna say that these two are both protected by this intervening wood and that one, and that one really, yeah, it's, it's, it's not gonna happen. So he's not gonna fire this turn. Uh, the Queen of Clubs is the tanks. I don't think they have an eligible target. So th their weapons are long range as well. So anything further than one inch is fine. I don't think they can really see anything this turn. Queen of Diamonds is the uh, the missile trucks. Now these might stand a chance. Yeah, so these missile trucks can fire at these infantry. So they've just got LX1 missiles. So long range, explosive, one caliber. So that's one attack value. Um, we'll fire one of them at this unit of infantry. So our target die, because we're auxiliary units, it's always two. So it's gonna be two plus two is four. We're gonna need a five because it's long range and we're gonna need a six because they're in cover. So this is actually kind of a stupid shot, but we might as well take it. So we need a six to hit. That was a terrible die, I'm not, I'm not accepting that. So the first one misses, the second one will try as well, needing a six to hit, unlucky. So there we go. So even, this is it, even though the target dice generally stay pretty low, it's the extra little modifiers that sometimes add up. And I know that I've railed on before about how I don't like having all these little plus one, minus one modifiers, but there's three, which I think is okay. Cover, long range, and if you've already fired, and that's it. So it's not too bad, I don't think. I did really, really try and hold back, but in the end, I just decided that these ones were actually kind of relevant to the game because they, they do all kind of add something to the strategy of, of the game. So those missile trucks have done their ineffective turn. King of Diamonds is the weasel. So what's the weasel armed with? I don't remember. I, I built these like just for this game. So we've got uh, an LB2 ionizer. So a long range ionizer. 
uh, SK2 flat cannon and SX2 rocket. So he's got two short range weapons, which are going to be no use, but his ionizer is uh, LB2. So it can fire long range. It's a beam weapon and it fires two. So we'll we'll do that. You know, we said that this was cover. So he's, he's going to be firing into cover and he's firing long range. So it's our target die is one. Their target die is one. So that's two. Three, because we're firing with a long range weapon. Four, because he's in cover. So four more, four or more to hit. Let's, let's do this properly. So that is one hit. And let's see where that hit lands. That lands on module number five. So that is a heat sink. But remember the beam weapons, which this is, Beam weapons, if they hit an undamaged module, they get to roll another hit. Now, this doesn't keep chain reacting, so we, we won't get any more. But because that's hit an undamaged module, we can roll an extra hit. So module three is also going to be hit. So that's his pulser. So as you can see, I, I do really like battle tape. But you, there is a little bit of that effect where for the first few rounds of combat, generally you're just kind of chipping away at them. Whereas here, we haven't done any like critical damage yet effectively, but... Pretty soon you do get to the point where you're like blasting modules off off max and you're like wiping out auxiliary units. So I, I did want that to be uh, really quick. Okay, so what should I have done before he fired? I should have given him his heat, but we'll give it him now. And that's it. He's not going to fire any other weapons. Is this the final card? The Jack of Diamonds, which I think is the field gun. So I'm glad this is last because artillery is the one that is... Not not complex, but it's just a bit different. So short range weapons can fire up to nine inches. Long range weapons can fire anywhere over one inch. Arc arc weapons, sorry, not artillery. Uh, arc range is anything beyond nine inches. Um, and if an ally can see the target, you can effectively target that unit. So any unit can act as a spotter. So we have two of these field guns and we have lots of units that can see the enemy so what are these things they're kinetic weapons Let, let's try and get rid of some of this infantry yeah let's try and do that so the the pink panther here can see no he, the, the missile truck sorry can see all these infantry so these are effectively acting as spotter which means this field gun platoon can shoot at these even though they don't have line of sight because they're at least nine inches away. So this one is going to fire at the nearest infantry platoon. So it's target die two because they're auxiliary units. So two plus two is four. Uh, they do have cover, so it's going to be a five plus to hit. And remember, because these are kinetic weapons, if we roll a six, that causes a bonus hit. So the first one misses. The second one will try on the same target. Misses as well. And with these um, auxiliary units, one hit will just wipe them out. So it can very quickly turn bad for this infantry. So that is all of the combat phase done, I believe. There are two phases left in the turn. There is the meltdown phase. And here, any max that have taken internal hits equal or higher than their class are destroyed. So when you take that enough damage to be destroyed, you aren't destroyed immediately. You get to have your last turn which often means you'll sort of fire all your guns <laughs> and go out in a blaze of glory, um, which I'm not sure about how I feel about that yet. It's, it's kind of fun, but I might there might be something added to kind of temper that slightly. Uh, but yeah, that, that's when you check to see which max are destroyed. Uh, auxiliary units are just taken off the board when they're killed, um, but max, they, they save themselves for the meltdown phase and then they get destroyed. And then finally, we have the cooldown phase. So cooldown is when you get to lose some of your heat. And each Mac will lose heat equal to their class, plus the number of heat sinks they have. So, the Pink Panther is a class 3 Mac. It has two heat sinks, so it's effectively going to vent away five heat. It's only got three, so he goes all the way back down to zero. The Weasel, class 3, one heat sink, so he can vent four heat. That's enough, it's all gone. We are removing target dice as well, I should say. The Grenadier, he's a class one with one heat sink, so that's two heat 
two, two heat that he can get rid of, so that's enough to cool him down completely. And the Arrowhead, he's a class three with three heat sinks, so he's he's a really cool guy. He can event six heat each turn to sort of keep those missiles cool. So everyone is down to uh, to heat zero at the moment, and you, it's it starts off nice like that, but when you start losing heat sinks and when you start getting into range to fire all your weapons, it becomes a little bit more more tricky to manage the heat. So I think what we'll try and do is we'll do one more turn. And this time I will explain less. And we'll just see if we can like get some proper damage on the board. So Jack of Diamonds. That is the uh oh the artillery again. So you know what? They they, they don't need to move because they're where they are, they're where they need to be. Queen of Diamonds is the missile trucks. Again, they're kind of going moving first is rubbish like you you kind of always want to move second because it's um it's really bad moving first uh because people can just move out of the way so they will move a little bit they'll move four because they'll be moving through a bit of cover here so they're going to advance down here doesn't matter which way they're facing but i can't resist at least facing them a little bit and we've lost one of them through the end of the board that's interesting there we go so yeah, they're kind of facing this way, but it, it doesn't matter which way they're facing, <laughs> making it difficult for myself. So Ace is the arrowhead. So he's kind of he's kind of happy at long range, but getting up here would give him a good. So he is going to climb up. So he's going to advance six inches to put himself up on this hill, so he can kind of see all around him. And because that was in advance, it's going to cost him one heat and one target die. Jack is the infantry. Yeah, we said that we were going to try and head for one of the objectives here. So let's let's keep it up. Let's keep going six. Get them out to this cover. Now these guys can't make it across, so maybe they'll just like move to the edge of the cover because. They're probably a little bit scared about this artillery that's been firing on them. Ace of Diamonds is the, um, the Pink Panther. So he's like all about long range. I think he's going to want to face off with the Arrowhead. So let's move him six. 6.1. Will you, will you forgive me? <laughs> now, um, Max do block line of sight. So... I've, I've done a stupid thing here, but no, forget it, I, I want to do it, I've decided. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a problem later on. Oh, and, he, and he's advanced, so that's going to be target die of one, heat one. King of Clubs is the Grenadier. The Grenadier is going to rush. Can he get within nine? Oh, potentially. So he's going to rush. Uh, what's his move? His move is seven. Because he, he has a... All, all max have a movement of six, but he has a booster, which is a module that makes him move a bit faster. So he's going to move... He's going to rush up to here. So rushing gives him a target, uh, target die of two. And heat equal to his class, which is one. So... That's great for him, actually. And the King of Diamonds is the Weasel. See, we could use the Jets. How far away are these guys? Should we should we do the stupid collision rule? The, the Weasel is going to do something very stupid for the purposes of the playtest. And he's going to jump. Um, he's going to use two Jets. He's class three, which means it's going to cost him six heat to jump and it's going to put his target die on three because jumping always puts your target die on three and he's going to jump um all the way he could jump up to 12 inches here he can't quite reach either of these guys but he's going to jump onto this <laughs> unit of uh, infantry and when there's a collision like this if a unit collides with a unit or barrier their movement immediately stops and they can move no further this turn um if 
if I rushed into another unit, both units take a number of hits equal to the other unit's class. If I jumped onto them, both take an extra hit in addition to this. Um, so auxiliary units always count as class zero. So if I'd rushed into them, I would just stomp them because I would do three damage to them, which means that unit is destroyed because um, it only takes one damage to destroy an AU. Um, so instead, I'm going to do four damage to them and one damage to myself. So one unit of infantry is crushed under the weasel. And the weasel is going to take a hit from doing that, which was really stupid. But I'm, you know, I wanted to show that you can do that. It's uh, it's not wanting to let me roll. Let's try this. So four. So module four is hit, which is his jet. So that's fine. He's, you know, he doesn't matter so much if the jet gets destroyed because he's uh, he's done his jumping for the day. And he's. He's nice and close to this arrowhead, but he's going to be, he's not really got enough heat to actually, <laughs> well, well, we'll see, we'll see. Let's let's see what happens. And finally, the Queen of Clubs, which is these tanks here. So they're going to move four. Now they can rush, can't they? So they, they could rush up to like here. And auxiliary units can shoot through each other. It's only max that like block line of sight. So if we set them up like this, I know it's kind of bullshit that they can shoot through each other, but again, simplicity is the order of the day here. So we are definitely going to have a more um, more eventful combat phase this turn. Ace of clubs. Let's just get these heat dice ready so I can do it so ace of clubs is the arrowhead now he's got kind of the choice here hasn't he well you know he's going to use a short range weapon on the weasel and he could still fire his missiles at the weasel but I think he's a little bit scared about the pink panther over here so we will fire our uh, SB1 pulsar at the weasel so that's going to use one heat it's going to be one die. One plus three is four. Um, and that's it. It's four plus. Because there's no cover. It's not long range. I haven't fired yet. I just need a four plus to hit him. Whiff. Now we've got our two LX2 missiles. And we're going to fire all of them at the... No, you know what? When you've got missiles, it... missiles are better against targets that have already been hit. So we're just going to pour all the missiles into the weasel as well. So the only change here is it, it was four plus to hit, but now we'll we'll spend our two heat to fire it. But now it's it's three plus one four from the target dice, five plus because I'm using a long range weapon. Even though it's at this range, the long range weapon is always less accurate. That's the price you pay for the weapon having a longer range. So it's up to a five, and we've already fired this turn, so it's going to be sixes to hit actually. No, nope. and then he's going to fire his other, his next rack of missiles. He just needs a six. Come on, one would be nice. Here we go. So where does it hit? It hits module number four, which has been damaged. So the jet is destroyed. And because this is an explosive weapon, when it hits a damaged or destroyed module, we get an extra hit. And that will be on number five. So now this jet is also destroyed. Uh, not destroyed, just damaged. So that was a lot of heat to use, but that wasn't too bad. And, you know, we can vent all that heat, so it's it's fine. Next, Queen of Diamonds is the... It's these missile trucks, isn't it, that now don't have line of sight because a Big Mac came and stood in front of them. So they will not be doing anything. Uh, Jack of Diamonds is the, the field guns. I think we're a little bit frightened of these tanks, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to target these tanks because these tanks have armor, which basically gives them a four plus save. So even though auxiliary units are destroyed by one hit, 
um, you know, th these get a, a, a save essentially to avoid taking that hit. So we'll fire these at, at the tanks. So it's two plus two is four. And that's it. There's no cover. It's not long range. It's arc range, which is different. Um, so it's just going to be four up to hit. That's a hit. Uh, because it has armor, he can save it on a four plus. And he does, so he's fine. The second shot, you need a four plus to hit. It doesn't do it. So this artillery at the moment, not, not very effective at all. But, you know, the threat is nice. Uh, Jack of Clubs is the infantry. So the infantry can now shoot. Uh, and their weapons are SK-1, so it's short range. Kinetic, one. We can just have them all fire in turn, really. So it's target die two plus target die three. Um, he is in cover, technically, which I don't know if we counted previously, but we'll we'll start counting it now because he was in cover. So it's going to be two plus three plus one for cover. It means these are going to need sixes to hit as well. No. 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 You can run into these uh, shots where you need six to hit, and it can be frustrating, but he, he has just been jumping. That, that's the main kind of factor, really, here. Queen of Diamond, Queen of Clubs, sorry. That's the tanks, isn't it? So each of these tanks has a long-range cannon. So each of these is going to fire at the Panther, the Pink Panther. So he's target die one, they're target die two, so it's three plus to hit. They are long-range weapons, so it's going to be four plus to hit. So first tank hits, second tank hits, third die misses. Now we are technically resolving these one at a time, but I just thought we'd speed things up. So let's see which one each hits. Module one. Oh, the big missiles have taken a hit. And the iron has so it we're getting close to disarming this this Mac, which is which is pretty dangerous. Ace is the weasel, isn't it? No, the ace is the, the panther. So, what's he going to do? See, if he fires everything, he's going to be in trouble. But then again, this is a good example of... This can show how the, the system works. So, he'll fire the LX4 ultra missiles. At the, in fact, he's going to fire everything at the arrowhead. He's going to fire the... Um, He's going to fire the ionizer first and then the missiles. So they're both long range. The ionizer is uh, three caliber. So that's going to put his heat up to four. So the target die is one plus one is two. It's up to three because it's long range and that's it. So three is to hit with this beam weapon. Shocking. Terrible. And the module that's hit is module number six, which is a heat sink. And because that was an undamaged module, and this is a beam weapon, we're going to burn through it and hit something else. One, the missiles take a hit. Now we're also going to fire our um, ultra missiles, which is a four caliber weapon. Now, you'll notice we can't go up to, we can't add four heat because we, we can add two heat to go up to six, but then we can't add any more. So the extra two heat are going to be two hits on the panther. And these, these happen before the weapon is fired. Now, you probably wouldn't actually do this. This is really stupid. But we're just showcasing things here. So, oh, they both hit a shell. Now, the way that a shell module works is if you take a hit to a shell, uh, you can ignore it on a 5+. plus. So we'll test for each of these. So one of them does protect him from the heat, but one of the shell modules is going to take the damage so there we go it wasn't all bad and now we're getting to fire four missiles at the the arrowhead so it's one plus one is two three because it's long range four because we've already fired two hits these are explosives so we want to hit modules that have already been just uh, damaged three and four so the pulsar is destroyed and the heat sink is damaged. And because we hit one damage module, we'll get one bonus hit. Number six is that heat sink is now destroyed. So the arrowhead 
is really suffering after those missiles. Um, and the Pink Panther, I think, I think he's done. Uh, King of Clubs. I'll speed through these last few so that we can get to the final, final phase. Uh, the Grenadier. What, who's he going to fire at? Short range, so he could fire at either. Um, Pink Panther is more damage, so we're we're going to continue to fire on the Panther here. So he's firing. He's only got one weapon. He's firing his Giga Cluster, so it's going to cost him three heat. It's a short range explosive weapon, three caliber though. And it's going to be two plus one is three. Three's to hit. That's it. So that's the advantage of having like a big a, a big single weapon is you're, you you don't get that minus one for firing successive weapons after the first. Two hits. Two and three. Oh, so his ionizers are destroyed. And his heat sink is damaged. And because it was explosive, we get one more because we hit a damaged module. And now we've destroyed this heat sink as well. So as you can see, we haven't had any internal damage, but we're really starting to, these max are starting to get into a kind of dangerous place now. Finally, the King of Diamonds, which is, is that the Weasel? Well, the Weasel hasn't got enough. If he fires anything, he's going to start taking damage from the heat. Um, and he's in kind of a bad place. Maybe he'll... Yeah, but this is a very tempting target. So, you know, he is going to fire. He's just going to fire his rockets. So it's going to be two hits because he's he needs to take two heat to fire the rockets, but he's already at four heat. So he's going to take two hits to himself. Oh, no. So one and one. So the first hit will damage this. And the second hit will destroy it. So it's a good job he wasn't trying to fire that. In, in trying to fire his rockets, he's destroyed his other weapon. Um, so he's going to fire his rockets. Uh, target die is three plus one is four. There's no other modifiers. It's a two caliber weapon, I think. So we're rolling two dice and we need four or more to hit. One hit to module one, which destroys the missiles. And now we'll get an extra hit because it was explosive. Ah, so we've because we've hit a module that's been destroyed, that's going to be one point of internal damage. So we'll put that there. And when the arrowhead takes three, he's going to be at critical damage. So that is our first real blood of the day. Okay, so we'll very quickly look at the final cooldown phase. Well, the meltdown phase, no one's melting down. Uh, for cooldown, the Grenadier, he can get rid of two heat. So he just goes down to two. The Panther, he's lost a heat sink, hasn't he? So he's going to be cooling four heat. So he just goes down to heat two. The Weasel is class 3 with one heat sink, so he's going to vent four heat away. So he's now on heat 2. And the Arrowhead uh, is still getting rid of five heat, so the Arrowhead is going down to one heat. And that would be where we would be at for the next turn. And uh, I hope that's useful. That is uh, Mac Attack. I don't know what's going to happen with this game. For now, it's a free thing you can do. You can go to bastionand.com, and it's there in the sidebar under Mac Attack, uh, along with a lot of my other games. Uh, as always, if you enjoy these uh, things that I do, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash bastionland. If you want to stay up to date, the best thing to do is to sign up to bastionland.substack.com where I send out a weekly uh, email newsletter. And that's about it. Uh, so I hope that's been useful and goodbye for now.